Hello, I'm Andrew Saul from the Oxford Future of Real Estate Initiative, and along with my co-authors Professor Andrew Baum and Dr Fabian Belasman, we wrote PropTech 2020, The Future of Real Estate. And uh, our motivation was that we, we thought that there wasn't a single document that had all the information you need to know um, to keep you up to date with all the transformations occurring in the real estate industry. It's available for free download from our website if you go onto any good search provider and search for the Oxford Future of Real Estate Initiative at Sally Business School, it should come up, and that's along with all our other reports that we've compiled over the last two years. This talk is going to take place in five sections. Um, it starts off very high level, but towards the end you'll hopefully understand a lot more of what's occurring within the real estate industry. And I highly advise you to go back and watch part one again, because you'll be a lot clearer on all the information, all the jargon um, involved. I apologise. For some of the variations in sound, I've had to re-record it a few times, um, so bear with me, it's my first attempt at trying to make anything like this. The uh, final slide of the lecture has um, details on how you can give me some feedback, email address, social media, and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, all that's left to say is let's begin, and I hope you learned something. Hello, I'm Andy Saul from the Oxford Future of Real Estate Initiative. And today I'm going to be talking to you about our recent report, PropTech 2020, and giving you an introduction to PropTech. The Future Real Estate Initiative was set up at Side Business School, University of Oxford in 2017, with help from our partners Arcadis, BCLP, CBRE, EY, Grosvenor, Nuveen, Redevco, The Crown Estate and UBS. We're headed up by Professor Andrew Baum, author of 2017's seminal study, PropTech 3.0, The Future of Real Estate, which really launched our research initiative and in fact put PropTech on the map. Subsequently, we have released research on the future of real estate transactions, tokenization the future of real estate investment, a follow-up to PropTech 3.0, which we've called PropTech 2020, the future of real estate, and most recently, how to solve the UK housing crisis. In 2020, we plan to release reports on the future of real estate occupation, the future of retail, the future of valuations, and the impact of climate change on real estate asset risk. Today, I'm going to focus on PropTech 2020, the future of real estate. This section will be used as a introduction to PropTech and seeing as you're watching this video, I already assume that you understand that PropTech is just a merging of the words property and technology. So what exactly is PropTech? PropTech consultant James Deersley, a friend of our initiative, has come up with my favourite quote to sum up this movement, and he says, PropTech is similar to teenage sex. Everyone is talking about it, everyone thinks that others are doing it, everyone is telling others they are doing it, yet nobody knows what on earth they are doing. Striving for something a little more academic, James approached Professor Andrew Baum, head of our research initiative, and they sat down to come up with the following definition which we still use today. PropTech is one small part of the wider digital transformation of the property industry. It describes a movement driving a mentality change within the real estate industry and its consumers regarding technology-driven innovation in data assembly, transactions and the design of buildings and cities. It should be noted that this definition doesn't just include technology, but refers to a movement which requires cultural change. You can build all the great technology you want, but without the buy-in from the industry it's absolutely useless. One of the key mistakes we find startups make is not understanding why things are done how they are and what it'll take to undo that ingrained practice. They simply turn up with flashy new systems and then scratch their heads when no one wants to invest. Let's now look at a brief history of the PropTech movement, or movements, because as you'll see, PropTech is nothing new. At one point in time, everything is a new technology. The original PropTech would have probably just been a bucket and spade. It was the Romans who introduced land registration to England and Wales, giving authority to the idea that you can own and trade a particular area on the Earth's surface. What we refer to when we're discussing PropTech here is the particular use of digital technologies by the real estate industry, which we believe hit the mainstream in about 1980 with the rise of personal computers and information analytics. The growing data availability enabled more quantitative financial modelling valuation software and portfolio management systems such as Argus, Yardi and CoStar. In fact, it's reported today, 40 years on since this first wave of PropTech, that 60% of real estate companies still use non-specific software as their primary reporting tool. This is most likely Excel. This only adds further evidence to my statement of the challenges facing startups in removing old habits. 
PropTech 2.0 began in about 2000 with the internet, cloud computing, smartphone apps and APIs. The rise of websites and online marketplaces enabled a reduction in search and transaction costs, reducing friction in the real estate market such as Rightmove, Zoopla, Zillow, Airbnb and WeWork. And where we currently sit in 2020 is in this transition from PropTech 2.0 to PropTech 3.0 through the rise of AI, machine learning, Internet of Things, building information modelling, distributed ledgers and big data. All of these technologies are bringing around the digitalization of the real estate industry, which I'll explain a bit later on, as well as creating innovations such as smart buildings, real estate financial technologies and shared economy. Some startup examples include Open Door, View City, Proppy and Skyline AI. The boundaries between these different eras of PropTech are not so clear, with many 1.0 companies still around today. In fact, CoStar, a commercial data provider, is worth 21 billion US dollars, making it by far one of the biggest prop tech companies in today's market. The left hand graph shows a closer look at the trends occurring in the prop tech market. We can see from our comparison and analysis of over 7,000 prop tech firms that while there's exponential growth from 2007 to 2015, there's been a clear fall in the number of new, new prop tech firm foundations. By 2018, the number of new firm foundations is back to the level of 2009 and the big boom that was PropTech 2.0 seems to be over. However, as the central graph shows, total funding is still increasing. The right hand graph shows that the amount of funding per firm has also continued to rise exponentially. So this is not yet a bust, but the garage business PropTech boom is over and the market has continued to grow and mature into a consolidated phase with more series A, B and C rounds recently and fewer seed and angel backed startups. This decline in startup activity is inevitably in advance of our predicted third major wave of prop tech, the timing and magnitude of whose peak is impossible to predict and its cause is less so. Prop tech 3.0 will probably be driven by the global pressures of climate change and rapid urbanization and enabled through the maturing of exogenous technologies as already mentioned, such as the internet of things, machine learning and artificial intelligence and blockchain. So the first thing we have done in the report is to make clear distinction between technologies being used by prop tech firms and the innovations in the real estate market which these prop tech firms are creating. Before we take this closer look at the difference between technologies and innovations, there's one key concept which needs to be understood as it will be repeated throughout this talk. Analog information does not involve electronic processing of numbers. This can be thought of as a book or a hand signed lease agreement. Digitized information is digital but unintelligent. It requires human interpretation. This can be thought of as a scanned PDF or a photo of a signed contract. Most importantly, digitalized documents are those that are machine readable. In contractual terms, this is a sort of tick here to accept the terms and conditions box and the machine knows exactly what is going on. Digitalized data is the foundation on which any market transition or disruption is going to occur because it allows digital technologies to process information without the need for human interpretation. This is the current fourth industrial revolution, which will affect all industries, not just real estate. So what are the technologies enabling digitalized business processes? In the report, we've highlighted the following key technologies. I won't go into detail about the, how they function, as I'll be singling many of them out throughout the talk. But we've included a detailed description of all of them in the PropTech 2020 report. Most importantly, a quote from Emily Wright, who's tech editor of the Estates Gazette, a freelance writer for GQ, Wired, The Sunday Times and The Space, um, said that you do not need to know what a system or software actually is. It's all about knowing what it does. So the thing to hold in your mind is that most of these technologies make real estate processes more transparent, liquid, trusted and secure, and therefore enable decision making to become automated and reduce costs. However, one of the key barriers facing the industry is the lack of digitalized data that exists on which these machines run, where for so long real estate has relied on analog and digitized processes. This list of technologies represents what we refer to as exogenous technologies, those which have application across all industries. Prop tech companies use a combination of exogenous technologies and apply them to solve real estate problems. These real estate specific tech packages we call endogenous technology, or more simply, Prop tech. A good example of an exogenous technology is mobile data powered smartphone applications, whereas a prop tech is Airbnb. 
The innovation occurring is that of the sharing of residential space. Dr. Fabian Brasman, our very clever data scientist, took a database of over 7,000 prop tech companies to see which exogenous technologies each were using and in what combinations they were using them in order to create a six sector endogenous categorization. Every time a prop tech company was using two or more technologies together, it registered as a link in his model. When 7,000 of these links had been made, it enabled him to identify the most prominent technologies which are most often used together. The following six clusters are the results of those most common combinations. What we can also see is that most funding has gone into a central cluster of business processes, modeling, smart real estate, and analytics-based prop tech. The real estate fintech and contech are not part of this central cluster. They can be shown in the model on the left, if you look to the bottom and the left of, of the screen. What this means is that no company is yet using blockchain and GPS, for example, or modular building and BIM. It should also be noted that this data set does not include sharing economy companies such as WeWork. So what are the major business process innovations occurring as a result of the impact that these technology clusters are having? We like to divide the innovations occurring in the real estate industry into three quite distinct sectors. The first is smart buildings. This describes technology-based platforms which facilitate the operation of real estate assets. The second we like to call real estate financial technology or real estate fintech, which describes technology-based platforms which facilitate the trading of real estate asset ownership. And the third is the shared economy, which describes technology-based platforms which facilitate the use of real estate assets. Parts two, three and four of this talk will focus on each of these sections in more specific details. So the final slide on defining exactly what is prop tech is our high-tech, no-expense-spared, word-art-generated attempt at providing a visual model of the PropTech 3.0 ecosystem. PropTech 3.0 is the application of the next wave of exogenous technology to the real estate industry, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, Internet of Things, and big data. For these exogenous technologies to be applied to their real estate use cases, data digitalization must occur within the real estate industry. We've shown this by placing exogenous technology and data digitalization outside the realm of prop tech, but highlighting their importance in underpinning the market innovations which are occurring, as you can see on the left and bottom of the diagram. The application of exogenous technologies in various combinations has driven market innovations in three key areas, smart buildings, real estate fintech and shared economy, which make up the core of the prop tech movement. Other tech sectors which influence the extent to which these three main real estate innovations can flourish include developments in contact or construction technology, smart city technology, legal technology and financial technology. So hopefully a little more fun, but still definitely one for the economists among you, is how we measure the prop tech market. The metric of success used by most established companies is profit. However, in the technology world where growth is the best indicator of future value, more investment means higher valuations and more chances of investor payback, so how much money gets poured into an industry is often seen as a sign of health. However, the exact figure getting poured into prop tech is highly varied depending on how do you define the prop tech market, with difficulties in definition as we've already found. CB Insights puts it at 10 billion US dollars across four years, with Venture Scanner putting it at 20 billion in 2018 alone. Other estimates put this amount of money between 3.95 billion US dollars and 21 billion US dollars. Regardless of definition, there is one thing that all agree on. Prop tech market funding is only going one way. In fact, according to Concrete Ventures, a European prop tech venture capital firm, this growth is occurring twice as quickly as it did in fintech, growing from 2 to 12 billion in two years as opposed to four. The prop tech market is made up of three key investor groups, the first of which is traditional venture capital. For those in the UK, if you think of Dragon's Den style investors, they provide money to companies in exchange for a percentage of ownership. They invest across sectors and target established prop tech companies as part of their wider technology portfolios. The most active of these is SoftBank's Vision Fund, with nearly $100 billion to spend, flush from the world's biggest exit in the form of Alibaba's IPO. Their minimum investment floor is $100 million. These guys are literally throwing cash around. In only three years since 2017, SoftBank has invested around $10 billion in the co-working brand WeCompany, 
1.1 billion in intelligent window manufacturing view, 1 billion in Indian hotel chain OIO, 867 million in a construction startup Katera, 400 million each in Open Door and iBuyer and a residential software company called Compass, and a seemingly pitiful 200 million in a shared storage provider Clutter. The next category we have is PropTech funds and accelerators. Now these are not really the same thing, but we've grouped them together because they both provide capital exclusively for PropTech firms. Let's start with the accelerators such as Metaprop in the US and PyLabs in the UK. Hundreds of early stage startups will apply to become part of these accelerators and only few will get selected. Those that are are given a set amount of capital for a fixed term, as well as office space, access to a network and expertise. As with venture capital, this is all in exchange for a piece of the company equity. The PropTech funds are a lot like venture capital, again, but solely targeting the PropTech market. And the biggest of these is Fifth Wall. Launched in 2017, its first fund of 240 million US dollars had commitments from the real estate industry, including CBRE, Lowe's, Brookfield, Equity Residential, Heinz, Host Hotels and Resorts, Lenar and Prologis. This makes it perhaps the closest thing to a real estate industry research and development consortium currently available. In July 2019, they raised the largest ever PropTech targeted fund at 503 million US dollars. Finally, traditional real estate companies are either launching their own in-house PropTech solutions, partnering with startups, directly investing in startups, or indirectly investing in startups through the PropTech funds like Fifth Wall. Their aim is not so much profit as with the other two groups, However, survival. This reminds me of a story that um, a lot of people like to tell, which is that of Blockbuster versus Netflix. Blockbuster was the 2000s go-to video store for VHS and DVD rental, and they actually turned down the opportunity to buy a young Netflix for a mere $50 million because they believed their customers enjoyed visits to the video store and internet streaming would not catch on. Now we sit in 2020 knowing that Netflix is a multi-billion dollar company, which has forced Blockbuster to close its doors. Similar examples are littered everywhere. The founder of Pixar was actually a disgruntled Disney employee whose idea to create computer graphic cartoons was continually shut down by the Disney management. Years down the line, Disney ended up having to buy Pixar back for a monumental sum when they could have just kept this technology in-house all along. All of this investment activity has given rise to 23 current PropTech unicorns, a unicorn being a privately held startup company valued at over 1 billion US dollars. Those not on the list who have successfully IPO'd and become traded companies include Redfin, Zillow, GreenSky and American Homes for Rent. WeWork famously have tried to IPO and failed. As a result, they're now worth about 6 to 7 billion and not the 47 billion we've got them down at the top of our list. This list is dominated by the US and China. As with the world's leading 10 tech companies, being Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Alibaba, Intel, Oracle, Samsung and Baidu, Seven of these call America home, while three are based in Asia. As a result, China and the US have a disproportionate amount of influence over the future of technology. Fragmented European real estate markets make it difficult for startups to scale across borders, as each country has different cultures, languages, standards, industry processes and legislation. We will see this in the next slide. From our database of startups, 6,428 PropTech companies listed their location with Western Europe having the single biggest share. We can see this particularly in the UK, whose startups have received five times more investment than the next closest European neighbour, Germany. Other hotspots of the prop tech industry are California, the US East Coast and metropolitan areas in Asia, including Delhi, Shanghai, Beijing, Seoul and Singapore. Compared to these areas, most other regions of the world have much less well-developed prop tech sectors. So to summarise, there is no common categorisation of what constitutes a prop tech. We use a three sector model of smart buildings, real estate, financial technology and the shared economy. As a result, no one knows how large the market is, with different estimates putting its size at 4 to 21 billion for 2018 funding. Prop tech is largely located in the global north, concentrated in three pockets around East and West Coast USA, Metropolitan Asia and Western Europe. While the global market is currently in transition from PropTech 2.0 to PropTech 3.0, driven by the emergence of digitalized exogenous technologies such as blockchain, AI, machine learning, Internet of Things and the proliferation of big data. 
consolidation of startups is now occurring with more funding going to fewer new startups. PropTech is younger than FinTech, but capital is being deployed more rapidly from three main investor groups. These are venture capital, PropTech funds and accelerators, and traditional property countries. Globally, there are 23 current PropTech unicorns. PropTech is not just a fad. Well done for getting to the end of the boring bit. In the next section, we'll explore the three sectors of business innovation more closely, highlighting the problems which are present in the real estate market and how the application of PropTech can be used to overcome them.